It's Mo Tuesday, and today we're looking at King Randor. Coming up after this. Okay, I recorded this video last week, and the file got corrupt. But I just had so much to say about King Randor that I had to redo the video today and we will compare him and look at him in depth. I have been doing these figure reviews usually in sets of four, but I think I might have to take my time because I had such a good time opening and reviewing him, even though you'll never see that. But hopefully I will be able to remember and talk about everything I talked about before. This is the figure that I wanted more than any other figure. It is the only figure that I came back to uh, get later in the years. So I do have original on-card one. I couldn't bring myself to open it when I bought this in, I'd say it was 10 years ago. I paid $50 for it. I wanted it so badly, and that was a lot. Now I think it's probably, I don't know, I have no idea. I haven't looked in a while. Probably $200 range. I'm not exactly sure because I, you know, don't want to know what the prices of the older toys are. So I don't really look because I might be tempted to sell the ones that I have open. This is the only on-card um, original figure that I have. And yeah, the reason I have him is because I want him. This was my favorite wave out of, well, besides the first wave. The very first 1982 wave was definitely the best wave. It is what got me hooked uh, when I saw those figures. I ugh, I was mesmerized. I couldn't believe how awesome they were, the size, the colors, and everything. But until they really never captured that reuse of parts until the final, I believe, what is it? I think it's the seventh wave, 1986 six on the back of the card, but I think they, that means that they were released in 1987. There is a misconception, and it has been around for, I don't know, since since the internet, I guess. Uh, somebody put Mos Mosquito into this wave. Mosquito does not belong to space. If you look at the back, if you do your research and look at the back of the cards, um, Mosquito, if you look at the back of Mosquito's card, you will not see any of these figures because they were not released yet. Um, I know because I never bought any of these figures. Well, they weren't like this. I have gathered together the Origins versions of the last wave. Now, what we're missing from the final wave, we're missing Snake Face, Squeeze, which kind of don't really count because they're in a category of their own, and Blast Attack. So, Blast Attack is the the figure that I want the most, and after King Randor was um, um, scheduled to be released for the Origins line, uh, he, he was the first one that I wanted because I'd, I never wanted to open up these. I mean, I also wanted Scareglow and Clamp Champ and uh, Ninja. We've got we got these so early on in the Sorceress, and they re-released Faker when they did this. This this was the wave where they didn't want to spend too much money on bodies. So up until the final wave, they started started sculpting, like Mosquito, for example, their own special unique bodies. I guess that's kind of why Squeeze and Snake Face and, uh, and Blast Attack don't really belong in the group either, or the Sorceress, but really these ones were made from reuse of parts. These guys, these actually, these five guys were Mattel trying to get more figures on the shelves because Masters of the Universe was going down and nobody wanted it. Nobody liked the movie. Uh, movie figures also came out in this year and then there were some um, deluxe um, He-Man and Skeletor and Hordak. There were two Hordaks and I think also is the problem is that there was a Buzzsaw Hordak that is kind of rumored to be in this wave, but, and there's also, I don't know, the one that has the spinning. Do they have it on the back? No. They don't have it on the back because there was no Horde released with this wave, which, because they were putting all of their Horde was out, Nobody wanted to associate the girl the girl show with the thing. The snake men were in. 
and look at these figures. I mean, I just, I love this wave. It's uh, my biggest regret in life is that I stopped collecting toys as this wave was coming out. And that is the reason I know all of this is because I got Mosquito, I got them with Extendor and Blast Attack. And I was paying for these figures with my own money. And I was so um, excited when they would come out. I would go to Zellers in Canada and buy them all. And that is when I got um, Mosquito and Extendor and Rio Blast and uh, Horde Trooper and, 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 and many, many others that um, are great figures. But these were the first, this was the first line to recapture that original feeling for me anyway. Uh, they were just cool figures. And anyway, I'm so happy to have them. But let's take a look at King Randor. Um, this cape. I was worried about this cape because the worst part of all of the figures that came out with Origins, um, this Scaragolo cape is the absolute worst thing because of this tiny little string for me. The thing about Masters of the Universe is that they're so hunky and chunky and awesome and they're, they're like toddler toys and that little spindly tiny little thin rope on his cape drove me crazy when I saw this release. Oh yeah, the other another problem I have is Zodak's head definitely goes far down far too um down far too much on his neck. But this this cape is a good one. I never did like the soft goods. The thing about Masters of the Universe is that the Origins line is that I think I like them even more than the original toys. Now, I love the original toys because, check out these colors. These colors are so weird, super inspired, especially the first wave, super inspired by the 70s, because that is when they were developed, and these color combinations are crazy. But you can still see that in the King Randor colors. They kind of um, make them the same, but look how they brightened them up a little bit to bring them into the 2020s where we are today and the gold see how the gold is more gold here like this is just these dirty bright colors i guess that is the best way to describe the colors of masters of the universe and there's 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 good and there's bad things i mean look there is a little more detail in the new ones like i mean and also he does look like the burger king king that's undebatable but check out that glossy face and the less detail in the eyes they have done a pretty good job with his eyes the shira the first release of shira i talked about in my last um, I opened up all of the girls with the better knees, and the She-Ra's eyes were horrible on the first one, but the second time they released her, they definitely improved her, but I, I don't, I'm not one for detail. Like I said, I like the simple, basic, bright colors and hunky chunkiness of Masters of the Universe, the original ones. But, um, yeah, this is an improvement with uh, the rubber cape, and, well, I can't say it's an improvement. Um, I, I do love them both um, for their own reasons and equally. One um, big change to King Randor is, well, uh, the knot cloth cape. And then these were always hard shells, and these are now made of a, a rubbery, soft plastic, which I'm. this is another improvement that I like. Check out the detail, the molding on that. I love it. Uh, is this the same as the one that they gave to um, Jitsu? I assume so. I guess I should have had him available for this review too, but I don't. He's he's back there, and he's 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 too buried to run and get. He has the spear again. It is more gold this time than it was originally. Yeah, you can see it in there. The spear was from the weapons rack from Castle Grayskull. It was a reused part. They did a lot of reused parts. Uh, just looking at the back of this card is amazing. Um, new figure, new figure, new figure, old figure, old figure, new figure, new figure. I, I, and I try to ignore the deluxe figures. The He-Man variants and the Skeletor variants, 
Never was a fan of those. And then on the back of the um, Snake Men cards, you will see that uh, the original, that they just showed the Snake Men. This is uh, the card that King Randor came on. Oh yeah, you want to see how the card has changed? Um, not very much. Do you like how uh, the 40th has pushed down the thing? Oh no, it has actually pushed it down further than normal, but it's pretty cool how it's so identical to the original. They really do that, but check out Here's the difference. Axel's sketches are amazing, but once we get the digital coloring on them, they um, don't look as good as these traditional paintings, in my opinion. I am more of this, you know, old school, real hand painted artwork opposed to a digitally colored artwork. Um, the figure designs are awesome. I, I do love this artwork very, very much. But nothing beats the hand-drawn, hand-colored artwork of the 80s uh, as, as beautiful as this artwork is. Um, I really need this wave. I'm so upset. Never came to Canada. I don't have any of these figures coming. No, I have some snake men coming in the mail. Uh, I need all of these figures. It's really, really sad. I don't know what we're going to do. There are two Snake Men waves available in Canada right now. Do I have any of that standing by? Uh, no, but over there I have Snake Armor, Skeletor, and Roboto that I found in the store. And um, a friend of mine from Europe has sent me whatever, whatever Snake Man was in that wave. I think it's Tongue Lasher. And for some reason, somebody took the Sun Man figure from that wave. So I don't understand um, why that person would do that, because nobody likes Sun Man except me. I love getting the Sun Man figure. Uh, collecting this line is horrible because it is so hard, especially in Canada. I am happy that I was able to pre-order everything. And now I don't have to worry anymore because it's all coming from Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, in advance, I ordered it, and uh, that's cool with me. I am so happy to have all of these. When can we get Blast Attack? Please, please let Blast Attack show up for us. This is the comic. We get my my favorite schematic drawing that I love so much that tells you all of the parts that come apart, which I also have not played around with interchanging these. And I don't know what's up with that because that is something that I love in a toy where you can mix and match the parts. But I mean, I just love the characters as is so much of that I don't want to. And uh, I guess the pieces are so specific to the individual character that it's, it's not really fun to mix and match them as much as I thought they would be. But having that option, I think, is incredible, especially maybe once that we get these more basic Sun Man figures in, and I don't know. I don't know how I'm ever going to get that Sun Man 3-pack. I really, really want it, need it. And now there's a second 4-pack. Is it a 4-pack for the Snake Man? With E-Man? No, or is it another Sun Man 3-pack? I, I don't remember. I don't like to think about it. These Target exclusives that are impossible for me to get. Uh, this is this is so cool though. When are we getting Blast Attack? I love these figures. I hope you love these figures too. Frogmonger's coming up in more reviews. Um, uh, we've got uh, this this two pack with Zor Zoar and um, Tila that I haven't opened. We need to. I opened up all of those girls in that last video. I need to compare her to the other Tilas that I have. And um, like I said, I do have Snake Armor, Skeletor, and Roboto to also open, and I might open them individually. I also want to show you my whole collection of these um, brown boxed ones from Mattel Creations. However, I'm missing Coldar, if that's his name, because I ordered them, and then Mattel sent me two Matchbox cars instead, and... They almost didn't even refund my shipping. Like, what the what? Oh, I'll show you the comic book at the end of this video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.
so I love these comics. And if you've seen some of my videos before, you know that the Canadian comics do not have the interrupted text bubbles in them. So it's really, really cool. And you might have seen my binder where I collect them. I probably should try to strike up some kind of trade with an American fan who wants to get um, the comics without the bubbles. And then I can have copies of the ones with the text so I know what's going on in the story. And then they can have the other alternative version of the comic book. But again, the artwork is fantastic. I love the little figures on the back, the checklist, the cross cell. It's, 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 it's beautiful stuff. Can't wait to get this guy. We're going to be getting one of those guys eventually. Um, I hope that this line goes on forever, and I hope that I somehow can get all of the missing waves that Canada did not get. I have a feeling that the two Snakeman waves are like going to be one case to select stores, and I don't even think people know that this second snake wave that I just got was in stores, because I haven't seen any people really mention it online. I, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's so sad. Can't I can't I just want to buy I would have bought triples of every figure if they would have been available, but I was lucky to find one of each. Some of yet I'm still waiting to find. I love them though.